it has been six years and uh, we were the different label and when we started that label they had a lot more rock bands and they were really pushing the rock thing and we started noticing as we were turning in demos for a future record that um, they weren't so much into the rock thing and uh, so we were just writing all these songs taking all these trips to Nashville and it turned out that it really started to feel they just wanted an all AC record uh, and that is a big part of what we do it's just not the whole picture so for us it felt very dishonest to just say okay we're just going to do this thing um, completely this way so we kind of fought back and forth and that that in and of itself probably took three or four of the years so then we did a song called here for a reason and that song was kind of a handshake deal with the label it was like hey if this song's really successful um, we'll do another record and if it's not we'll let you guys go and what I remember about that was life-changing for me. Um, the song broke the top 20, you know, and so for us, like, we're thinking, hey, that's pretty good, and the label's like, that's not good enough, and so we get dropped by the label, and I go into this, like, two-week-long pity party of, what now, you know what I mean? Like, I, we lost the record deal, um, we don't have another album coming, is this it, like, are we done, you know? And I, it was probably about two or three weeks into that, I remember getting an email from a radio station in St. Louis and telling me that there was a 13-year-old girl who heard this song and had plans to take her life. And in three minutes worth of air time, turned it all around. Um, it was a big God moment for me because part of you as an artist, you are looking at the charts. You want to feed your family off of the music that you make. Um, but it was crystallized for me in that moment. It was like God just literally saying, don't define success by a chart. Don't define it by a royalty check. There's a human that would be, a, that would be dead now who's alive because you wrote the song, and that needs to be enough for you. Um, and it broke me down. And I remember my wife and I contacted the station, got back to them, and we actually did a Skype call with this little girl and got her story. And it was so life changing. And with that song, as much of a quote unquote failure as it was, after that, I started getting story after story after story from people on the road, messages, emails, um, the same thing over and over. And so we had this huge gap of time off. We had this unsuccessful single um, that was life-changing for me, and we still didn't know, like three or four years into this thing, like if we're going to make another record with a label. Um, in fact, I think we decided to go ahead and do it independently, do a GoFundMe, and just kind of throw it out there and see what happened. And our manager came back and said, like, let, me, let me go talk to BC. Um, give me that chance to do that first. And honestly, this is the healthiest we've been as a band. Um, BC, I know it sounds like I'm, every time I do an interview, it's like a BC commercial. But this is the reality of what's happening for us. I got to sit down with Brandon Evil, the president of the label, and he told me, we're going to work together, we're going to agree on three singles. And you can do whatever you want with us this album. You know who you are as a band. You know who your fans are. You know what you do well. Um, and he stood by it. He didn't hear the record until it was turned in. <laughs> and so literally he was hands off, like, you know, we had the three singles agreed upon, and um, I don't know, just, we've never been more happy as a band to put something out that we can put our stamp on. Because that was the idea the whole time was, you know, hopefully this thing is successful and we keep doing this for a long time, but if it completely flops, we just want to walk out with head held high um, and know that we did the best we could. This is the best album we can write, best we can record, best we can play. Um, I think we did that. I honestly feel like all of these songs were in some way either written during that period or inspired by it. Um, there's, a, there's more desperation than before, but at the same time, there's, it's lighter. And I think that's where, you know, calling it Let the Light In makes sense in a lot of ways. But there's more hope. Um, you know, the album before I think was completely desperate, almost, front to back. And now I think as we're older, we're family men, I got two kids. It shifts everything in the way you look at the world and the way you write music. Um, but the album's also, it's its a little more diverse, um, or a lot more diverse, really. I mean, there's a song in there that's like a funk song with trumpets, and <laughs> somehow we got away with that. Um, there's one song that's written completely for military and first responders. I mean, we just really, we took every experience that we had in those six years and we put it on the table, and we didn't hold anything back, and we didn't judge it, and we just let it be. The word we keep saying, and I keep saying more than anyone, it's just an honest record. It's not trying to be anything. And so, you know, hopefully that's what the world needs.